be with you, to come together as a group to worship your name, to worship you as in spirit and in truth. I was glad when they said, let's go to the Lord, let's go and worship the Lord together. Lord, we appreciate the ability that we have to do that. We ask that it, in this time and in this place, that you might be glorified, that you might be built up, that we might worship you in truth, that we might see you for what you are. You are love, you are faithfulness. Lord, we pray that as we worship you, that you might impress upon our hearts lively sentiments of faith so that we might be built up in the word, so that as we leave here, we are willing to talk to people about you that we go out into this world proclaiming your name as our own, that we become a fan of yours, so that as we speak, as we interact, as we have relationships with people, that you become an important part of those relationships, so that people might see you, so that people might believe in you, and then join us in worship of you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, good morning. Hey, 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 hey. It's good to see your faces. I'm gonna need your help. Just a little bit of encouragement. I wanna give you a little bit of thought of my week. So, I found myself at the beginning of this week sad. And I think sometimes people get like that, like things could be going okay. Uh, things can be fine. Maybe you're concerned for other people. That makes you feel bad. And I found like, trying to talk to my parents, and that didn't help. I tried to talk to family, like siblings, that didn't help. I talked to myself, and that didn't help. But I had this little voice inside that's like, hey, why haven't you talked to God yet? us trying to reach him because he's always there. If we can move ourselves aside, put our pride aside, put our anger aside, and calm and humble ourselves to be before him, he will do amazing and wonderful things. Help us out, Satan.
a provider. We truly serve an awesome God. We truly serve an awesome God. Praise God for this moment. It is so good to see each and every one of you here this morning. And it's now prayer time. God has allowed us to come in this morning to approach the throne of grace, to pray to him. He's not a, a God who is distant and a God who is too far that we can't reach him, but we can thank him, we can praise him for all that he has done. And so for those who are at home, uh, who are joining us, we praise God for you. And as we prepare to go to the throne of grace, there are many that we want to keep in prayer this morning. We want to keep in prayer uh, Sister Lynette Lawson, who had surgery a few days ago. I had the opportunity to see her yesterday. And she said, tell my EBC family that I'm doing fine. So she was tired, but she was she's doing well. So we want to continue to keep her in prayer. We also want to keep in prayer Sister um, Whitney Wright, who was in the hospital recently, is doing better, has been released as well. We also want to keep in, in prayer uh, Elder McDaniel, who was in and out of the hospital and is back, back out of the hospital. So we want to um, also keep her in prayer. We want to keep in prayer Sister Jackie Gillen, uh, also, uh, Sister Golden and the Golden family, also uh, Sister Parker, all of them who are rehabbing, uh, Brother Story, Sister Bostic, the Davis family, uh, the Schultz family, we want to keep them in prayer as well. The many that we want to keep in prayer, Sister Bolden, who was in the hospital, um, who began dialysis uh, just a few days ago, we want to keep her in prayer. Sister Vicki Taylor, 
uh, who is continuing to, uh, to get better. It's now prayer time. We're going to ask anyone, uh, all who can stand, if you would stand at this time. And the, the transition of the mother-in-law, Brother Ike's mother-in-law uh, transition this morning. So we want to keep Brother uh, Ike Grayer in prayer. It is so good to see all of you in the house. And praise God as, as, as Elder Moore comes to take us to the throne of prayer. So good days, and I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days, yeah, and some sleepless nights. Sleepless nights. But when I, I look around, yeah, yeah. and I think things over, bless you, Lord, all of my good days yeah. outweigh my bad days. And what will you say? And I. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. And I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what, what's best for me. Even though my eyes, they cannot see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I won't complain. Yes. I waited patiently for the Lord. Oh, he has put a new song in my mouth. <laughs> Even praise unto our God. Then he shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come, oh God, in the humblest way that we know how. We just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Oh, I won't complain. In the midst of adversity, oh God, in the midst of a pandemic, oh God, I won't complain. Because we know whose hands that we're in. We're in your hands, oh God. And you can do all things, and you do all things well. We thank you for this revelation right now. We come, oh God, just thank you for our lying down last night and our early rising this morning, oh God. We had the activity of our limbs, oh God, and we were clothed in our right mind. We had the opportunity to come out to the house of worship one more time and worship your holy name, to lift you up, oh God. For that, we say thank you. Thank you, oh God. There's none like you in all the earth. We exalt your name today. Hallelujah. The highest praise, oh God. Oh God, for this waiting congregation, oh God, we lift them up to you right now. We ask for a fresh anointing. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power in your name, oh God. There's healing in your name, oh God. There's deliverance in your name, oh God. We 
say, thank you. Have your way in this house. Let your Holy Spirit abide, oh God. There's healing, oh God, in your name. We ask that you heal today. Oh God, we lift up this congregation. We lift up our pastor, the shepherd of this house, oh God. We just say, oh God, that we come, oh God, just wishing and, and hoping, oh God, that your presence, Father, will be felt in a mighty way today. In a mighty way. May, may your word go forth with power so we can be encouraged today, oh God. Oh God, there are those who are sick among us, oh God. We ask for your healing power. We ask in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, there is a stranger in the city and he's healing today, oh God. There's more power in the hem of your garments than all the hospitals in the world. So we say heal today in the name of Jesus. Touch today. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we're going up on the rough side of the mountain, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. There's trouble on every side, oh, God. But we know, oh, God, that you have the power to heal, Father. We, you, you have the power to deliver, oh God. So in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we declare your delivering power right now. Oh God, Satan is a liar and the truth is not in him. We stamp him out today, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we, we ask, oh God, that you would uh, come into our households, into our families, oh God. During this time, oh God, where we can't be together, we can't hold one another, we can't embrace one another. Oh God, but you can embrace us all. Oh, you embraced us with your love, oh God. You embraced us on the cross, oh God. It wasn't the nails that held them to the cross, oh God. Oh, it was love. So we ask that your love would be abound a today. That it will cover us today. In spite of our circumstances, oh God, we look to you. We look to you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for being God and God all by yourself. Oh, we, we are encouraged today. We are lifted up today because we serve a true and living God. There are those among us who are bereaved today, oh God. Oh, God, we, we know, oh, God, that you, you said in your word, Father, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Uh, oh, God, you promised to wipe all tears from our eyes. We thank you for your word, oh, God. We, we stand on your word. We stand on your promise right now. Oh, Father, for this waiting congregation, oh, God, we, we pray, oh, God, for the shepherd of this house, Father. We pray for your word today that it will go forth with power, oh God, that we will be encouraged, oh God, that we will be renewed, oh God, oh God, that it will touch our lives in a mighty way, oh God, that, oh, we can go forth knowing, Father, that you are in control, Father. It's not the government, it's not the White House, it's it's not all these powers that proclaim, but you are the final word, oh God. You have the final word, oh God. We trust in you today. Oh God, as we leave this place, oh God, and as we go into this service, oh God, we, we know, Father, that, that you are with us. We know that there's power in your name. We know that there's healing in your name. Oh, there's deliverance in your name. Help us, Father, to recognize and lean on you. Not lean not to our own understanding, but to lean on you. Because you know what's best for us. We thank you. We praise you today, oh God. We magnify your name, oh God. Oh God, we, we, we lift you up, oh God, because you're worthy to be praised, oh God. We lift up the name of Jesus today. We lift up the name of Jesus today. We lift up the name of Jesus today. We thank you. We praise you. Give glory to yourself in all that we do or say. We ask it all in Jesus' name and 
for his sake we pray. Amen. Lord been good to me He's been so good to me More than this old world could ever be He's been good to me Thank you Lord Thank you Lord sure are worshiping this morning, aren't we? Amen. Amen. We welcome you to Elizabeth Baptist Church. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you answered God's call to be here this morning. Because we don't believe in any accidents. We believe that God brought you here today to join us in worship. It's God's plan for us. We worship God in spirit and truth in this building. And so we're glad that you've come today to join us. Are there any visitors this morning? Any first time or, or uh, few time visitors? Ah, oh, bless you. Bless you. Good morning. It's glad to see you. We're all going to stand and wave at you. We'd love to give you a hug, but we're not going to do that this morning. So we're just all going to stand and wave at you. Welcome to Elizabeth Baptist Church. One of the things that happened recently in our church is that we realized the importance of testimony. When God is working in your life, it's important for you to share that with the body of Christ. And so we encourage you, if God has worked in your heart or in your circumstance this week, if God has made some positive impact upon your life, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to understand so that we might be built up by your testimony. Are there any testimonies this morning? Good morning, EBC. I was messed up when I came into church. I'm glad to be in the service, and I'm not going to talk all day. I just want to take this platform and say thank you. I thank all of you. I know you were praying for me. But I want you to know I was praying for myself, too. God is good. He works miracles. He's a healer. And I stand on his promises today. Again, I'm just glad to be in the service one more time. One more time. morning EBC family your sister Lizette again I was glad when they told me to come into the house of the Lord 
Oh, hallelujah. Y'all remember me. I was here and then I wasn't. But God saw fit in his mercy and his grace to bring me back home to my family. And there ain't no Sunday going to go by. I ain't going to have something to say to somebody what God has done for me. See, yes, Lord, I just want to be like him. That's why I come to hang with y'all, so I know how mature Christians act. That's why I do that. So y'all the solution, Lord, for me through Christ. And I'm going to tell everybody everywhere I go, first I want to be able to walk so they can see something in me. And want to say, is that how you get that? I'll be like, Jesus. <laughs> Good morning, EBC. Um, I haven't been here in such a long time because of viruses and things. I'm just thankful and blessed to be here. I'm thankful for the Lord to just keep his hand and protection over our, our family. Uh, my family has gone through a lot of health crisis. Uh, my son fell off of a two-story balcony. But God is so good. He's so good. He had broken bones. But the Lord brought him and he's back at work. My husband, he's had his health problems. My father-in-law has had health problems. But God is worthy to be praised. I just want to thank him. I want to thank God for all blessings, great and small. Thank you. I got one. Uh, sometimes I get stuck in kind of routine to try and just keep things moving. And you know, it's the small stuff sometimes for me that kind of can change you know, my mindset. I just paying bills like I normally pay bills. You know, king for a day. And then we got to get back to the grind the day after we get paid. So... I'm trying to pay a bill on my car. Um, and, you know, I'm using the voice person, not a person, but the little recording stuff, and I'm typing stuff in and saying everything's wrong. I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I, I've done this for the last three years. And then I end up calling to talk to a person. And the person, you know, I give her all the information, and she was like, oh, well, you're done. And I was like, what does that mean I'm done? She's like, oh, well, your car is paid for. You own it now. And I'm like, what? I don't own anything but my guitars. <laughs> so that, that was a blessing for me because that was a down day. But the lady that, when I got that, and that was right after a devotional, and it was like, all right, God, I see you. I see you. So. Hey, man, let's just say praise the Lord. I just want to take time out to give God some praise and give God some glory and testify to a a couple of the things that God has been doing in my life. After 25 years, I did in prison. I came home in 2014 and joined the Elizabeth Baptist Church and blessed to be a part of this worship, part of this fellowship. Amen. God has always revealed to me since I've been saved how awesome he is, and I thank God for that revelation. But Elizabeth Baptist Church stands, to, stands up to me as a symbol of God's greatness, God's goodness, his faithfulness, love, and mercy towards us. And I'm so privileged, so honored, so blessed to be experiencing the tremendous blessings of God here at Elizabeth Baptist Church. There's, there's, there's so many things God has done in my life since I've been home. Have not been without work. Married when I came home. Had a son, he's three years old this month. We just had our second son, he was born Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Little Carter Amir, eight pounds and five ounces of Hulk, amen. And I can start testifying to the financial blessings that God has poured out of my life, but I was able to get my wife a car a few weeks ago. No money down, no cash down. I mean, it's not a commercial to say the things that God has done for you, it's the truth to confirm that we serve a God that is great. 
than any situation, any circumstance that we can experience or go through. He is faithful beyond measure. And I just want to say, God, thank you. Bless you forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, Elizabeth. Uh, some of you might not know me, but um, Elder Moore, and I just want you to know that I, it's, it's so good to see all of you. If I don't get a chance to say hello to every one of you, but it's uh, it's so good to be back in my home and and uh, to see you all and see you all doing well. Uh, I want you to know that you've been in my prayers, and I, I, I would hope that you would lift me in your prayers. Amen. <laughs> And I, 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 I just couldn't uh, sit here and not say that I love you. And you're always in my heart. God bless you. Man, we praise God for the testimonies and to see how God is working in our lives. He is healing. He is taking care of debt. He is providing new life, and God is still doing miracles. Amen. Amen. And praise God for the testimonies. We're going to have a word of prayer as those who uh, join us on Facebook and YouTube and Zoom uh, and on the telephone at this time. And so we just want to um, join in prayer with everyone. And turn on all wise God, we thank you so much for this day, March 21st. Uh, 2021. What a blessing it is, Lord, to be a year into the pandemic and to know that you're still sustaining. To know that in the midst of all that has gone on, you are still faithful. And so, Lord, we're grateful today for the opportunity to come together, the opportunity to be connected. For those who are here in the house, those who are on the phone, those who are connected in social media. Lord, we thank you for your church. So, Lord, we pray that as we move forward today, that all that's done be done to your glory. We thank you so much for allowing us to be here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. For those who are here, um, we're going to look at Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. If you're at home, uh, you can look at Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Um, and we are uh, going to have communion in a moment. So those who are at home, if you can uh, grab crackers and juice. We'll do the family youth message at this time. Azinga. Azinga is going to sing for us, I, I believe. Azinga. Azinga in the house. Azinga in the house. Come on up, Azinga. Come on up, Azinga. Azinga says she wanted to, to sing to us today, and next Sunday, Lord willing, Whitney is going to do the youth and family message for Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is next Sunday, yeah, so it is good to see Whitney. Whitney was in the hospital, and it is, and is doing much better. I want to continue to keep her in prayer. Sister Williams, Tracy Williams, it's good to see you in prayer, definitely keeping you and prayers where Azinga, come on, well, let's give her a mic and let's have her come up here. Azinga is going to bless us in song. Amen. When we come into your presence, we're so happy. When we come into your presence, we so glad in your presence there's anointing and the spirit moves around us in your presence anointing breaks the yoke amen when we come into your presence we so happy when we come into your presence, we're so glad. In your presence, there's anointing and the Spirit moves around us. In your presence, anointing breaks the up. Amen. When we come into your presence, we shall have 
Great job, Bazinga. When we come into your presence, we are happy and glad. Wow. Never heard that song before, but look forward to hearing it again. Wow. Great job, Bazinga. <laughs> Excellent. Always grateful for the gifts that come into the house and those who, those who bless us with, with those gifts. Amen. And... and and thank you, Sister Mariama, for leading her and teaching her as well. Amen. And Destiny, for your support as well as a, as a good big brother. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. We want to look at this, this passage quickly for the family and youth message. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And I'm grateful that many of our young people have um, been able to get back into school. And those who are not back in the school will be back in the school soon. They'll be back in the classroom. That is a tremendous thing. And those who have not, who've been in learning pods as we've had here. And so, what a blessing. Hebrews 10th chapter says, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. That's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Let me read it again. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So parents, I want you to know during this time, and you've been pressing hard and you've been uh, parents, mom, dad, you've been teacher, you've been tutor, you've been uh, bottle washer and cook, and you've been doing all these things. And throughout this time, God has been faithful. He has been faithful, and he will continue to be faithful. So parents, hang on in there. Hang on in there. There's, 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 light, there's light that's shining now, but there's more light that's coming. And so be encouraged. But to our children as well, so some of you are coming up on the end of the school year. And the, the school year is going to end um, in May for many of you. And so for some, this may be a hard time. Your grades may not be exactly where you want them to be or you're working hard to make sure that they're as good as they can be. And so as you're working hard, don't forget to pray. As you are struggling maybe with that calculus class or that ELA class, uh, English and learning, as you're working through their hardest class, pray to God because God will help you with that class. Pray to God. And so, so, so sometimes when you're young, you don't think about praying or you don't think God, but I want to encourage you that the hardest class that you have, God has all the answers. Let me say that again. The hardest class that you have, the hardest class that you have, if you have college calculus, God has all the answers. If you have English and it's hard, or history and it's hard, God has all the answers because he created. And so I want to encourage our young people and parents, pray with your children. If, if their progress report doesn't have the grades that you want right now, pray as a family for those grades. You might encourage them and you might even at some point fuss at them. Don't fuss too long. Don't fuss too long, but pray with your children because the passage says that God is faithful. For he who has promised is faithful. And so trust God that God will get you to this time. And then the, the second part of it, the second part of this, this verse, it says, let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. During this time where there's a lot of isolation, where it's hard to do, do good things, and, 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 and a lot of people are not in the same places. How can we as a family and as individuals encourage others to do something good? If you have 
a relative, if you have an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent who has been isolated during this time, children, give them a call. Give them a call. Send them a text, and if your grandparents don't know how to answer the text, then call them and tell them how to receive the text message. If you're comfortable, go by and spend some time with them so that they don't feel isolated. And so how can we encourage others? How can we encourage others to do good deeds during this time? And we should all be thinking about, we should all be thinking about, how can I encourage you? How can I encourage you in this time of isolation? But then the, the last thing that, that I want to lift up, it says not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Um, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So I want to encourage, so as, as the writer of Hebrews says, at some point, there's going to be this day that's approaching. And the day that he's talking about is the day when we breathe our last breath and when Jesus returns and that we get to go to heaven. He's saying that there's a, there's a good day that's coming. And so even before that good day, families and children, you're going to be able to get back to school at some point. The day is coming. The day is coming. Somebody said, well, I don't know when the day is coming, but the day, be encouraged. So just as we have been able to come into spring, winter is over. Winter is over. And God has been faithful to bring us into this new season. And so just as he has brought us into this new season, there's a day coming. There's a day coming then that we're going to have that freedom and, and be able to get back out. And so... I especially want to encourage our teens here. So on I, our teens know it as IG, on Instagram. On Instagram, particularly, they have this thing called tag. They have Instagram tag. And so on Instagram, what they do is they try to, so tag like the game, like the game tag. Everybody knows the game tag. Somebody said, some of our seniors are like, what are you talking about? So just like the game tag, when you were growing up and you were, you were going to tag somebody, and they became the one who was it. And so on Instagram, on Instagram particularly, they have IG tag. And so what they try to do is they try to get you to respond to something. And when you respond, you go tag somebody else. And the reason you do it is because you enjoy it. The reason you do it is because you enjoy it. If you really enjoy God, you should be in a perpetual game of tag. If God has been good to you, you should always be tagging somebody else. You should always be telling somebody, God made me, that Jesus died for my sins, and the Holy Spirit is on the inside of me, and tag, you are it to tell somebody else. And so young people especially, I need you to do tag. I need you to tell your friends and your cousins about God. I need you to do IG tag in the real world. And so here's why, here's, here's how we're gonna make it fun. For the balance of the year, for the balance of the year, and I'm on the third point, we're gonna do tag, tag team and victory. For the balance of the year, we're gonna do tag, tag team and victory. And here's how it's gonna work. Any young person or any family who comes up with an, uh, the best idea each month on how to reach other young people. So if you send me an email and you say, hey, pastor, we're going to do, we're going to send, we're going to send scriptures to all our friends on TikTok, and we're going to do a video on TikTok, and we're going to do it every day for the next month. Whoever has the best idea every month for the balance of the year that family will get a gift card. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. So it can be a young person or it can be a family because you can go tag, you go tag team. So that each month, the family that comes up with the best idea about how to encourage others and how to reach others, especially young people, that family will get a gift card. Because we want to make sure that you have the victory, but also they have the victory. Let's pray. Eternal, where we can come together and 
wants to be in the house can be in the house. Everybody who wants to be in the midst can be in the midst. And so we look forward to that day coming. We look forward also to the day coming when our, all of our children can be back in school and the things that we've learned where we educate our children at home and in school. And so we also look forward to encouraging and provoking others to good works, encouraging other young people about the goodness of God. And so Lord, we thank you. We pray that you bless this time, that you bless this movement, that you bless this moment as we press forward, especially to those who are unsaved. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. For those who are at home, we are going to uh, have communion at this time, and we're grateful um, as we prepare to serve here. Uh, grateful that we're going to serve here, and then we'll come back in just a moment to have communion together. that you have made for us a, a long time ago. It's through your sacrifice, O oh kind Father, that we're able to come to the table and commune one with another. Thank you, Lord. We so thank you, Lord God. We have the privilege, Lord God, to take part of your suffering. And, O oh Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh kind Father, to search our hearts. And if we have done anything, if we have sinned and come short of your glory, forgive us right now. And help us, O oh kind Father, that we might be able to tell somebody we're in a period in a time where we can look to you no matter what our suffering at this table from carnal, Lord God, to spiritual. And we ask this blessing in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. And amen and thank God.
it shall never lose its power. When you're in the operating room, it shall never lose its power. If you get locked up, it shall never lose its power. If you made a mistake last night and you asked for forgiveness, it shall never lose its power. Amen. Amen. On that night as Jesus was in the upper room, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body, which is for you. As oft as you do, do so in remembrance of me. And he took the bread. Amen. Also on that night after giving thanks, he took the cup. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the remission of sins. As oft as you drink, do so in remembrance of me. And he took the cup. Amen. Thank you. Brother Dorian, it's good to see you. I think it's funny that we're about to sing this song and you came today. <laughs> Come on, help us out, put your hands together. This whole song is about blessing the Lord, and we're going to do our best to do it. Chime in, help us out. Somebody help us out. I will bless, I will bless the Lord at all times, cause he's good. I think y'all know it by now, you can sing it with us. I will bless, I will bless the Lord at all times, cause he's good. Yes, he is, he's good. One more time, I, I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, 
keep saying it because I believe it. know to get my mind right and um, one of the, the title for it was cut off question mark and it went through the guy was talking about how sometimes we think that God doesn't hear us God doesn't see us God doesn't know where we're at and it was Psalms 31 um, verse 7 8 9 but in 22 it was David that mentioned that in his kind of silliness, he thought the Lord cut him off. But the Lord heard him, and the Lord knew him, knew where he was at. And she's, Miss Jennifer's going to read the verse, but I just want to encourage you all, no matter how dark, no matter how down, no matter how overwhelming things look, we continue to practice putting our trust in Christ. Because that's how we can push through. That's where the strength comes from. That's where the love and the mercy and the patience come from. So just be encouraged. Know that you're not alone. Know that you're not cut off from God. He is by your side. And as a family, as a kingdom, as a, a group of, as a team, as a body, we have each other's side and back also. So be encouraged. I will be reading from Psalms 31, verses one through seven, eight, nine. Okay. Um, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thy ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. In thine, into thy hand I commit my spirit, thou hast redeemed me. O Lord God of truth, I have hated them to regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. For thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities. Thou hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O, o Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eyes have consumed grief, yea, my soul and my mouth.
verse 22. For I said in my haste, I am cut off before thine eye. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. O Lord, O love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful, and plentiful rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, and all ye that hope in the Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs.
my hallelujah belongs to you. Help me out. How about we all sing it together? My hallelujah belongs to you. Give a worship, give a praise, my heart. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, Lord, my heart, my hallelujah belongs to you. Praise God for our music ministry blessing us again this morning. Amen. Again, no, no visitors in, in God's house. Brother Taylor is here. Brother Taylor, he's in the back. And so we praise God for all who are here uh, this morning. If you need a sermon outline, just raise your hand. Uh, we're going to be looking at 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, if you're at home or on Facebook or Zoom or on the telephone. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Just a couple of things before you. Um, on, so the last two days, as you know, uh, there were vaccines administered here. And so um, 200 on Friday and then 500 yesterday. So it's 700, you know, 700 vaccines, and, and not one dose went to waste. Not one dose went to waste. And so um, it, was, uh, it was a heavy lift. And so I'm thankful for all those who worked. And, um, you know, so yesterday, because, it, because of the number of doses, um, it started at 10, but you have, to, you have to start actually getting ready two hours before. And so we didn't finish until about 8. And so it was really, really kind of like a 12-hour day. And I was, I was just looking, I was just looking at how hard everybody was working. And, and so I just want to praise God. And, and so for the heavy lift, the heavy lift for those who are working. And we had all the people who came through here, we, all the people who came through here, not only did they get um, a vaccine, but they also got a food box. But more importantly, they got love. They got love and they saw God's people, God's people working and it was, you know, yesterday was particularly fascinating. Every people group, every people group, every, every people group was represented yesterday. Like every, every, you, you would have thought you were at the UN yesterday. Every people group was represented yesterday. And so I'm grateful that, that God allows, God allows for his people to come together and to work. I'm going to tell you this, this quick story. And so there was a, so the National Guard was administering the vaccines, and they were also doing some other things. And so throughout the, the day yesterday, people would come to me and say, hey, um, appreciate this. One of the, the National Guard's persons came to me and said, I'm so glad to be here. And I said, well, you know, thank you for your service. I'm glad you're here as well. She said, no, no. She said, I just had prayer with somebody. She said, I, I was here, and I was here, and... and and there was somebody, and, and I was walking out with them, and I was walking out with them, and I had prayer with them. And she just said, I'm just happy to be in this place. She said, because I see God doing some things, and it's, I'm just happy to be in this place. And, and what, what, I, what I said to her, I said, you know, God has you here on a mission. God has you here on a mission. And I said, you are very much on task. So you're very much on task. You're getting the mission done, mission accomplished. But, you know, I just, and, and she asked me, she said, do you, do you know this person? I said, yeah, I know, know the person. And I, I was just so grateful that, that God's work was just done in incredible ways. Um, the, the last thing I'll, I'll leave you with is so um, yesterday, yesterday, uh, they asked me, they said, well, they had begun to ask, um, I think on Friday, they said, well, can you 
can you do this more? Can EBC do this more? Can you um, be a site for more vaccines? And it isn't, when I say it's a heavy lift, it is a, it's not, you know, because everybody is kind of fully, got a full plate anyway. So it's, you know, the phone rings, the phone rings constantly. So I was looking at the messages this week. So on Monday, this, this is, so we get the normal messages, people are like, okay, you know, can you help me with food? The first message I got on Monday was somebody wanted to um, stay in the haven. He's fine, so don't worry about him. Don't mess with him. Don't mess with him. Okay. Um, they said, hey, we need housing. So somebody said, I need a place, I need a place to stay. And then there were the normal ones. But then we had hundreds of calls about the, the, the virus, about the vaccine. And so, it's, you know, it's interesting. But so they asked me yesterday, they said, can you do six more weeks? Can you do six more weeks? And that's a God thing. That's a God thing, right? And so what they're talking about doing, and, and I'll know in the next couple of days, but what's likely to happen is one day a week, one day a week for six weeks, and it probably won't, it probably won't start this week. It may start in the next two weeks. But for six straight weeks, say maybe on a Friday, uh, there'll be 500 doses administered to you. Again, just to try to get it, we're just trying to get, trying to get everybody out. For those who don't want to take it, you know, pray about it. That's between you and God, and that's fine, and no judgment. But for those who want to take it, we want to make sure that there's access so that we can all get back to do what God would have us to do. Amen. So stay tuned. As soon as I have the dates, I think it's likely to happen again. We'll do six successive weeks, and we'll do uh, one day a week. <laughs> People are like, no way. <laughs> no way. I'm going to ask if you'd all stand at this time. And, and uh, somebody, a friend of mine asked me yesterday, he said, how did that happen at EBC? How did that happen? I, I said, this is a God thing. I said, this is a God thing. He says, you know. It was kind of how and why did it end up happening at EBC? And it's like, it's a God thing. To, to God be the glory. He gets, he gets all the glory. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. It's so good to see all who are in the house today. The other thing I will say to you is um, over the next couple of weeks, as the weather improves, and so if the weather is nice on Easter Resurrection Sunday, Lord willing, we'll be outside. So I want to say that to the people on that are listening as well, because I know when we're outside, like every, everybody shows. There. So, a Lord willing, if the you know, so if we if we get at least mid fifties, you know, sixties on Easter Resurrection Sunday, we'll go outside, and you may need to bring a jacket or something, but we we just want to accommodate, and we'll still do the baptism that day. We'll still do the baptism. We'll do the baptism in here, and then we'll go go outside, and so. Um, but Lord willing, and, and if we have really good weather next week, we'll look at it next week as well, just to accommodate. I, just because many people are saying, hey, can, can, can you make a way so that we can come? And so we want to be as accommodating as possible. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Um, let's read it together. We're doing the entire chapter, and uh, it's 18 verses. Let's read it together. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy... We do not lose heart, but we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus is Lord, and ourselves as your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who is shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not of ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. 
always caring about in the body the dying of you, but having the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, so that the grace which is spreading to more and more people may cause the giving of thanks to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. But though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary light affliction is producing for us eternal weight of glory, far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are as temporal, but the things which are not seen are external. Please be seated. I want you to think from the topic, win or lose. Win or lose. When we live life, when we live life and we go down life's journey, it's often we're either going to win or we're going to lose. When we encounter obstacles in our life and there are hurdles in front of us, either we're going to win or we're going to lose. Those of you who may be basketball fans, and I try not to use too many sports analogies, we are in March Madness. We are in March Madness where many young men and women who play basketball try to win the championship. And those who may not be playing basketball, you have filled out your brackets. You have filled out your brackets trying to select the team that is going to win. And what I like about 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, it is, if you will, a pep talk. Paul is writing to us and he's saying, listen, here is how you win. You don't have to wonder about whether you're going to win or not. Here is definitively how you win. And so I want to walk through this and look at it. 2 Corinthians 4 begins with a therefore. And so the, you know, the, uh, those who are um, strong in the word, they say, well, if you got therefore, you got to look at what happens before the therefore. So I want to make sure that, that we hit that. And so I'm on point one here. And the first point is that do you have the best model, equipment, or tools to win? If you want to win, you got to have the best equipment. you got to have the best tools to win. Because if you don't have the best tools to win, you can't win. If you want to repair your car and you don't have the right sockets to get at the car, if it has centimeters or meters, it's a metric tool, and you have tools that measure by the foot, then you cannot achieve and you cannot be victorious. If you're trying to get something accomplished, imagine if you were having surgery and the, the surgeon asked for a scalpel, and the scalpel was not there. And the only thing they had was a butcher knife, and you would say, well, suddenly that is not going to work. You must have the right tools and the equipment in order to win. And so as we look at this, as we look at this, there is a best model. There is a best model in equipment to win. And, and, and what Paul is doing, he is describing it in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, and the fourth chapter. Now, I want to highlight some verses in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, because then we begin to understand the therefore. So here's what he says in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. He says, such is the confidence, because if you're going to win, you've got to have confidence. If you're a winner, if you're really a winner, you walk on saying, I'm going to win this thing. But if you don't have confidence, then you're not going to win. He says, such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency. If you want to win, you got to know where your sufficiency, you got to know where your strength comes. He says, but our sufficiency is from God who made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And what he is saying here is that there was an old model. There was an old model called the law. 
There was an old model called the law, and in the, in the New Testament, there's some things that we see a little bit more than we see in the Old Testament. We see love in the Old Testament, but we see it differently in the New Testament. We see grace in the Old Testament, but we see it differently in the New Testament. We see ministry in the Old Testament, but we see it differently in the New Testament. And so what Paul is saying here, there was an old model, but you better make sure that you got the new model. I know some of you have a phone. If you got a flip phone, maybe you need to get the new model. Maybe you need to get the new model. And so it's, it, what he's saying here, he's saying that there's a, there's, a, there's a new model. And in this new model, you have all that you need, that you have the adequacy, and then you have the sufficiency because God has sent his son, Jesus, and he's also given us the Holy Spirit. And so I would ask you today, if you're going to win, are you confident? in the adequacy and sufficiency of God in your life? Are you confident that God has given you everything you need to win in your life? If you really want to win, you got to be confident that God has, has given you all that you need. But then also in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, here's, here's, here's the other thing that, that Paul writes. He says, therefore, having such a hope, we use great boldness in our speech. And we are not like Moses because Moses used the old model. He says, we are not like Moses who used to put a veil over his face so that the sons of Israel would not stare at the end of what was fading away. In the old model, it would fade away. If you had a tan last summer, I had a tan last summer. It faded away. It faded away over the winter. It faded away over the winter. But if you got the new model, it doesn't fade away. When you get to heaven, it's not going to fade away. And so he said you need, to have the, you need to have the new model that does not fade away. And I, I, I like that. It says, do you possess the boldness in speech and actions? He said, because if you have the new model, you're going to be bold in your speech and your actions. You're not, you're not going to cower down when something happens verses 17 and 18. This again helps us with the therefore. We see how Paul gets to the therefore. He says, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In other translations, it says there is freedom. If you're going to win, you got to be free. You got to be able to flex. You got to be able to praise. You got to be able to do it without any bondage. It says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as the spirit of the Lord. So one thing, one thing, if, if you're going to win, you got to know that you're free. You got to know that there's nothing in this world that binds you from doing God's work. Some people stay at the starting line. They stay at the starting line because you haven't heard, you haven't heard God say go. When Jesus died on the cross and he got up on Sunday morning and he gave us his spirit, then it was time to go. It was time to go. There's this cooking show that we sometimes watch on TV and there's this guy, Guy Fieri, and they have these cooking competitions and he always says, three, two, one, go. And they don't start the competition until he says go. Some of you are waiting for somebody to confirm or affirm your gift. God has already given you the gift because he has, he has said that he is sufficient on the inside of adequacy. There's sufficiency of God. And even when we're weak, even when we're weak, his grace is sufficient. And so if we think that we're inadequate, no, 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 that's the old model and the new model. You got all you need. What I also like about this, and I, 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 I thank you, Sister Dumas, as we were talking. And so what the passage says here, now I, I need you to see this. It says, it says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed. If you got the new model, then you are changed. And look at, look at what it says that you are changed to. And what I'm changing, it says you are changed into the image from glory to glory. Even, and so when you are running to win, then you are changed and others see something else. So one of, one of the things, when, when I encounter children, 
Like, so we, you know, we're not tutoring in the schools, but every year, Minister Betts, you, you've probably seen this. And so when I would go into Willow School every year, there would be a new group of students, new group of students in some of the grades. And when I come in, I would sometimes, if I'm walking down the halls, I would hear children laughing. They were laughing, and I could hear them whispering. And here's what they would say. Here's what they would say. He looks like Obama. And then some of the kids wanting to tease me, they were like, you know, they got to know me. When I walk in, they would say, Obama. They would say, Obama. And so, you know, some people, when I've been in airports, and like, you know, you look like Obama. But I'm not trying to look like Obama. The pastor says that as I go through my life, I begin to look like Christ. I want people to see Christ. I want to look in the mirror, and I want to see Christ. The works that I do, I want to see Christ, because that's what the text says. So when you look in the mirror in the morning, you should see Christ. When you walk during the day, others should see Christ. Because the text says that we are in the new model. We are transformed to look like him. And we have to want to look like him. I love this passage. I love this passage. And so let's go with that. That is the, that is the backdrop. So he says, we have all of our sufficiency and adequacy through, through God because he gave us the gift. The new gift does not fade. The new gift does not fade. And we have freedom to look and to be like Christ here in this moment. And so I'm on point two. I'm on point two. And so here's what, here's what Paul says. He says, so since you have these things, since you have these teams, you are now on the team. He says, since, since you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're now on the team. And he says, what you're supposed to do in verse 1, 2 Corinthians 4, is you're supposed to do ministry. Ministry is not just for people who might have the title minister, but we are all to do ministry. And doing ministry is a gift. It is a gift. And so, you know, in March Madness right now, there are going to be lots and lots of players. But the players who enjoy the tournament are the ones who get to play. The ones when the coach says, it's time for you to go in. Those are the ones who enjoy it most. Those who are on the sidelines enjoy it also. But if you enjoy it the most, it means that you are actively involved. Ministry means that you are actively involved in doing God's work. I've got the definitions here. And so Paul says at the beginning here that we have this gift of ministry. We have this gift of ministry. Here's what ministry means. And I wanted to make sure that we had a working definition. Ministry means active. Let me say that again. It means active. Not passive. Not sabbatical. Not dormant. Not fearful. It means active service done with a willing voluntary attitude. Nobody should have to tell you to do it because you are serving for the Lord. It is active service done with a willing, voluntary attitude and specifically refers to spirit-powered service guided by faith. Let me say that again. So ministry, ministry is spirit-empowered service because I can't do it. It's too hard. Yesterday was crazy, Minister P. It was crazy. I, every, every, the parking lot was full all day. But we ran out of stuff that I didn't think we could even run out of yesterday. The middle of the day, we, run, we ran out of stuff. I was like, wow. Like, how could we? But there were, you know, 700 people in two days who came through one building. And so, and so it's hard, but, but it's, it's, only, it's only in the power of God. And so the power of God, the power of God. So ministry is spirit-empowered service guided by faith to share God's love for God's glory. That's what ministry is. That we do it. We do it. And if you want to win, and so Paul is saying that all of us, not just some of us, not, the, the title doesn't matter, that all of us have been called by God to be able to help somebody else to know God for God's glory. And then he says, once God has called you to get in the game, God has called you and me to get off the bench and to get on the court. He said, once you get out there, don't lose heart. 
Now, when you get out on the court, when you get out on the court, if you haven't been out there, if you're coming off the bench, if you're a starter, like if you're just getting into it, you're going to be a little bit nervous. You know, if you haven't been doing this all the time, you know, you're going to be a, you're going to be a little bit nervous if you're doing some, anything for the first time. But he says, I understand you're going to lose nervous. You're going to be a little bit nervous, but don't lose heart. You got to press on because if you want to win, you can't lose heart. Here's what it means to lose heart. To lose heart means that you have doubt, fear. It could also mean distraction. And it can be disobedient. And when we have any of those, when I, when I have doubt, if, if you get on the court and you think you're going to lose, then you should let the coach know, I need to sit down for a minute because I need to get it together. I need to get, I'm not ready for prime time yet. And so there's doubt. You pray to God that the God will, will heal and cure that doubt. And then also if you're operating in fear, because fear is the opposite of faith, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Either I believe I can do all things or I don't. And then if I'm going to get distracted. You know, one of the things I like about LeBron James is they hit him hard sometimes. I mean, they hit him hard. Like, they hit him hard sometimes. And sometimes they hit him so hard, it was clear that they want to injure him. And throughout his career, he is, I've never seen him get into fights. Because he understands, he understands that if I, if I fight, if I fight for a moment, then I can't win the battle. Sometimes Jesus withdrew because he wanted to win the ultimate battle to die for our sins. We can't get distracted. People are in our ear with negativity. So we can't get distracted. It's, it's so, it is so important. It's so important. And disobedience is so I, I like that Paul is saying that if you're going to win, you've got to be in ministry, but don't lose heart. But then the other thing, the other thing that Paul says, he says, as we go down in, in, into verse 3, he says that we have to renounce some things. Now, to renounce some things means that, means that there are some things that we are saying no to. There are some websites that you cannot go to. There are some words that should not come out of my mouth or your mouth. There are some thoughts that should not be in our mind and they should be reduced. If I'm going to win, at some point I'm going to have to say no. Let me make it. Let me go in somebody else's driveway. Because some, sometimes, especially during the pandemic, especially in the pandemic, one of the things, there are many things to do. There's a lot of ministry to do. There's a lot of work to do. And sometimes, sometimes we can, all, we can have our plates full and we can have a platter overflowing and somebody else asks you to do something and you know you don't have the time or the energy or the power to do it, but you still do it because you want to be a good believer. But the Holy Spirit is saying, don't do it, that it is time to say no. There are sometimes, and, and this is one thing that believers struggle with, we all always want to say yes and we all want to want to say yes to good things but when Jesus was with Mary and Martha he said no 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 it's not time to wash the dishes now it's time to be with the Lord and so sometimes we can push the Lord out of our lives by doing ministry and so in order to win there has to be discipline at some point of saying no there has to be the, there are some things that you just cannot do. I am, and, and so I say guilty, like I'm, I'm guilty of this thing. I'm preaching to me right now. I'm pre, you know, that there are some for whom the gospel, for whom the gospel is hidden, that there's a veil. I'm trying to tell somebody that God is good. I'm trying to tell somebody, listen, if you will just surrender to God, your life will get better. I'm trying to tell, man, I'm trying to tell you the reason why you're in that situation is just, you know, just let God, just let God handle it. Just surrender to God. Just be with God. Just, you know, just spend the time with the Lord. And, you know, you, you talk to your, your relatives and you talk to your friends and you want to, them to get the word. And it becomes frustrating because you know that life is going to be better, but they won't accept a relationship with God. And so what I like, what, what I like what Paul says here. It's, it's, it's important when the veil is over somebody's eyes, I need to make sure that I don't get frustrated 
by the fact that they're not doing what is obvious. Because I know that if they have a relationship with God, that their life is going to get better. And I keep talking, I keep talking, I keep talking, and they want to do it. And, and if I'm going to win, I can't get frustrated that there is a veil over their eyes. There may be uh, a spouse or there may be children who've not yet accepted the Lord. Just trust that God, the seed will be planted and trust that in God's time, in God's way, that, that that seed will blossom. But if I'm going to win, I can't get frustrated. Going on, I like that after he talks about the veil being there, what he says in the text, and I, I, I like this, he says that there's a light that comes from God. And he says that the light comes from God shall shine through us. The light that comes from God shall, not might, not might. When it's cloudy outside and it rains all day, there still should be light in your life. When it's crazy and storming outside, and when the diagnosis is not good, when the prognosis is not good, there should still be light shining because the text says it clearly. Let me, let me, let me read it in, in verse 6. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, that our job is to be the light in a time of darkness. It says not might shine. It says in verse 6, it says light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Where there's darkness, that means that God has called us to shine the light. And I love that. If we're going to win, if we're going to win, we have to let our light shine. But then I like as he goes on in verse 7. He says, you know what? There's a treasure on the inside of you. He says, there's a treasure on the inside of your earthen vessel. Do you believe that there's a treasure on the inside of you? Do you really believe that? If you want to win, if you, have to, if you want to win, you have to know that there's a treasure on the inside of you. Now, I know in our, in our humility, and I, I appreciate this, we said, well, you know, I'm all right. And the treasure is not, the treasure is not about us. It's, a, it's about him. And, and I, I want to look at that. But he says, he says that if you're going to win, you got to know that that sufficiency, that adequacy that, that Paul talked about, that that treasure really is on, that you have what it takes on the inside to win. Here's how, if you looked at it in the original language, and here's how they would have understood it. So treasure is a storehouse or receptacle of gifts of the great power of God. Let me say that again. So treasure, my body, my mind, my spirit, my soul, is a storehouse. It's a storehouse. So think about your cabinets. Think about your refrigerator. Well, you got more in there than you can eat today. Think about that second freezer and that second refrigerator. Just think about it. Just think about it. I, I, I heard you laughing, Sister Roddy. I heard you laughing. And, and some of you, you may have three freezers. And you got, you know, you got enough to last. If, if the pandemic came and you couldn't go to the store for a month, I'm guessing that many in here, you know, you're going to be good. And for those who don't have anything, in their cupboards. You know somebody who can come and fill your cupboards. And so, and so, you know, so God, you know, God's got that thing worked out for you. And so he says that your body and my body is a storehouse. It is a storehouse. It is a receptacle that we store up the gifts of God, the power of God, so that when we need to use it, we don't have to go and ask somebody, but it's already there. And so I, I believe that the treasure is on the inside of me. And I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. So this is one that I'm, I'm figuring this one out because I don't, like, I don't think of myself that way. You all know me well enough. I don't think of myself as, 
like having gifts or great treasures or anything. And so for me to think about that, I'm always thinking about God. I don't think about God depositing stuff on the inside of me. But the word says, I got, I got to read it to you. Here's what it says. I mean, you got to, you got he says, but we have, but we, not, not just the most talented person in the house. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not of ourselves. And, and that's how it get easy, gets easy for me. It's not about me, but God has put the, the treasure in you and me so that somebody else can see him. If I want to win, either I believe that or I don't. And then going on, if you're going to win, at some point you're going to get hurt. If you're going to win... Now, that seems counterintuitive. Like, how, how are you going to win if you get hurt at some point? Everyone who is, you know, the, the athletes, and so some teams have been disqualified because they tested positive for the virus, and some had ankle injuries. And, you know, I had an Achilles, you know, that I popped at some point, you know, playing a sport. At some point, you're going to get injured. But what's important is victors confidently survive and learn from the afflictions. Victors, if you're a victor, if you're a victor, you learn and you survive when you get sick. In fact, you get stronger, you get stronger as a result of the affliction. When I popped my Achilles, when I popped my Achilles, I was asking the surgeon, I was like, well, you know, this is pretty, you know, this, this is pretty hard and, you know, I can't exercise for a while. And I said, is there any chance that I can pop this Achilles again that you're going to surgically repair? He said, listen, he said, there's a 99% chance that that one will never pop again. He said, the one that could pop again is the one that has not popped. The one that has not popped. And so when you go through, when you go through afflictions, when you go through afflictions, you actually get, you and I get stronger. You get stronger. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. And I, 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 I love verse 6. It says, we are afflicted in every way. But not crushed. I'm afflicted, but I'm not crushed. You, you can't do it. And Job would say, to him, Satan came after me. He came after my family, but he couldn't crush me. And then he goes on and he says, perplexed, I don't understand what's going on, but I'm not going to lose and I'm not going to despair. Persecuted but not forsaken, Lord, I know that you're with me. Struck down but I'm not destroyed. And you got to know that when you're going through the afflictions that God's got you. A surgery coming up, God's got you. If you don't know what's going to happen this week, God's got you. There may be some heaviness right now, but God's got you. God will bring you through that thing. If you're going to win, victors confidently survive and learn from the affliction. I'm on point nine. And then he says, when you're going through, when you're going through, you have to know that when you have afflictions, that God's going to raise you up. That you have to know and believe, you have to know and believe that when you're going through, because if you're out there and you're battling and you fall down, when you, if, if you fall down or if you stumble, then you have to know that God's got you. That God's got you. If, you. if you've been dealing with an addiction for a while and you're worried about it, and, and Dr. Pride, you helped me so much with this, is, you know, there may be a relapse at some point, and we pray that there not be a relapse and that you can have a, a great testimony. But even if that happens, you have to trust that God, God's got you. That even if I mess up that thing, that God still has me. And he can, look at what the text says. Look at what the text says in, in, verse, in, in verse 13. But having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. Sometimes you got to say, God's going to raise me up from this thing. God's going to keep me on track on this thing. God's going to keep me on the right path on this thing. I don't know how he's going to do it. It's cloudy right now, but he's going to do it. And then it also goes on to say, I, I, I love this part of the passage. He says, knowing, in verse 14, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus. 
that I know it. That I know the same God who raised Jesus from the dead is the same God who can raise me from my stuff. My stuff pales in comparison. If he can raise Jesus from the dead, then he can deal with my issues. My issues are minor relative to him raising Jesus from the dead. And he is the same one who raised, raised me and also raised my family. I'm on point 10. At the end of the passage, Paul comes back to this phrase. Because he knows, in the beginning of the passage, he says, do not lose heart. He says, don't lose heart, don't lose heart, don't lose heart. And he comes back, he comes back in verse 16. He says, therefore, this time he isn't, he isn't giving it as an instruction. He's really saying, victors, here's what we do. So in the beginning, and I, I need you to see this, he says, you know, he says, it's, it's almost kind of, you know, well, you know, we don't lose heart, but it, at the end, he's confident, he's saying that if you're going to win, if you're going to win, let me, let, me, let me just make sure that you know and I know, we don't lose heart. We don't lose heart. That is, as those who are working for the Lord, we don't lose heart. And if you look at this phrase, this, this term in the original language, to lose heart means that you faint. That's what it means. That's what it means. It means that you faint. And when I was studying it this week, I was like, man, that's good. One time in my life I fainted. I was a freshman in college, and I was working hard. I was playing basketball, and I did too much. And I pushed through my fatigue like I was tired and my body was telling me that I was tired. And I just kept going. And it was a Sunday morning. I was in church in college on a Sunday morning. That's a good thing. College students, be a, be a church. And I'm praising, I'm praising, but I ain't feeling good. I got up, you know, I got up and I probably should stay in the bed. I'm praising and all of, all of a sudden, boom. Next thing I know, paramedics are around me, and they take me to the hospital, and I had pneumonia. I had pneumonia because I pressed hard. I pressed hard, and I fainted, and I fainted. And you know they made fun of me. They came to see me in the hospital. They're like, Dad Gibson, you fainted, man. Were you slain in the spirit there? <laughs> They make, because, you know, if you're like, you're 20 and you rough and tough, you know, like, you're not, you can't be a man and fall out in service. And like, you know, they're like, they question my manhood and everything. And so we, you know, we're going through that. But what was going on, what was going on there is that I was, I was weary and tired. And during this time, during this pandemic, many of us might be weary and tired. We're, we're, we're weary and tired of being in the house. We're weary and tired of not being free. We're weary and tired of just the circumstances. And especially at this time, if we're going to win the battle, we can't stop now. If you're on the path to sobriety, don't stop now. If you're trying to buy a new house, don't stop now. If you're trying to buy a new car, don't stop now. If you're trying to be in a relationship and make that relationship work, don't stop now. You got to press on because victors, those who win, keep going. In Psalm, 20, Psalm uh, 27, at the beginning of that psalm, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Because if you're going to be a victor, you know that there is no one who can stop you because God has given you all you need. I love what the psalmist said. He said, I had fainted. I would have stopped. I wouldn't have pressed on. I would have quit. I would have said, no, 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 pick somebody else. I, I, I love what the psalmist says. He says, I had fainted unless... I had believed, not might happen. When I went into the surgery room, 
I believed in the goodness of God. And then I would see him not when I crossed the Jordan River, but I will see the goodness of God right now. I thank God that I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to give up what God has given me. I thank God that when Jesus was on the cross and they pierced him in the side and they nailed him to the cross, he could have been it, but I thank God that he knew because of the goodness of the Lord in our time that he pressed on. And for us as well, we have to press on. Let's pull up the pictures. I want to finish up. I want you, I want you to know that God has called you to win. God has called you to win. So you can win or learn, but if you're a believer, you never lose. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. You may be going through some stuff right now, but if you're a believer, you never lose. Let's go to the next one. You were born to win. You were born to win. But to be a winner, you must plan to win and you must prepare to win. Going back to last Sunday, you got to have some expectancy. You got to expect you can win. You got to expect. I, I, I expect to win because of the treasure that God has placed on the inside of us. Last one. Jesus has already won us the victory. I know Resurrection Sunday is coming in a couple weeks, but I'm not worried about the outcome. I'm not worried about who's going to win, whether Jesus is going to win or not. And because he has already won, we have to know that we are victors and that we have won, that we have won and that God has given us the victory. Let's pray. Turn on all wise God. We thank you so much for your word. Lord, I thank you for Paul encouraging us. That if somebody is wondering whether I'm going to win or lose, Lord, I pray that everybody here knows beyond a shadow of a doubt because of the work that Jesus did on the cross for us that we are winners. Lord, I pray that if there's some doubt here, if there's some distraction, if somebody is wondering whether they can do it, I pray that you would allow us to understand that we have that treasure on the inside, that there is sufficiency and adequacy to get through whatever obstacles are in our way. Lord, I thank you for the fact that just as you raised Jesus, that you've promised to raise us. So Lord, we thank you for your word that encourages us, that makes us bold, that makes us alive. And we pray, again, if someone has not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, that they'll come into relationship today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we've come here today, we've come here today, those who have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, or if you've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and you want to be part of the team here, we want to invite you to come. If there's anyone here today that would come, we want to invite you to come. We want to invite you to come. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Is there another today? God bless you, sis. God bless you. Is there another today? God is so good. God is doing his thing. If, if there's another here today, God bless you, sister. God bless you. God is so good. God is so good. The Bible says, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. God is so good. For those on the phone, we have two who have come this morning, and we praise God for for how God is moving and how God is connecting and God has been so good. Is there another today? If there's another here today, God is blessed. God is blessed. God has blessed us to come together.
Veronica Riley asking for prayer. And, and coming on as a candidate for baptism as well. Amen. Come on, Sister Riley. Sister Riley acknowledges that God made her, that Jesus died on the cross for her sins. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside. And we talked about baptism as well. And we praise God for you coming today. Praise God for you coming today. If you'd like to have a word, you're welcome to do so. Mm -hmm. Well, we praise God for you. And I know you asked for prayer. Let's have it just a quick word of prayer. Eternal God, we lift up Sister Riley. We know her desire is to see you and to seek your face and to stay on the path. And so, Lord, we pray that you would keep her on that path, that she would be encouraged, and that others who are supporting her will also do all that's needed to keep her on the path. Let her know, Lord, that she is a victor. She's not a victim. She is a victor. She has all she needs to win the battle and that the battle was won on the cross and that victory is transferred to her. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We also have Lonnie Reed coming out through Christian Experience. Amen. You turn around, turn around so everybody can see you. So this is Deacon, Deacon Lonnie Reed, who is coming, um, Christian experience. And so he, he actually, and he would be humble. So some of you would have seen the, uh, the movie Hidden Figures that talks about those who were really successful in NASA and blazing the trail. And it focused on the role of women and tremendous women. He was one of the hidden, not really hidden figures, because he was one of the trailblazers at NASA here in Cleveland. He's one of the trailblazers at NASA, known across this country, known across this country for the work that he has done. He and, he and John Moss were, were working when, when they weren't thinking about having engineers and working, working as rocket scientists, working as rocket scientists, he was doing it. And so with that, with that, and so Elder Stark, with that science, there's still, a, there's a strong faith and understanding. If you'd like to have a word, you're welcome to do so. I just want to thank God because he's brought me a mighty long ways. And uh, I've always, um, I had an early start for my foster mother because my real mother died in childbirth with me. And so she always taught me, no matter what the problem, Jesus was the answer. And uh, she, she knew that even though she couldn't read or write. But I, I found out that she really knew what she was talking about. So thank you. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask if you would go with Minister Best. Go ahead. Go ahead, Elder Moore. Go ahead. We're going to ask everybody else if you would stand at this time, and we praise God for your presence. If you'll go with, if you'll go with Minister Betson. Sister Jones, God is still performing miracles. God is still performing miracles. If you had asked me what the pandemic would look like, I would not have described it this way. I would not have described it this way, but only God. Only, only God. And so we, we're so grateful for this moment. As we prepare to leave and those who are online, we ask that you would give as the Lord has blessed you to give. God has blessed us. One of the things that happened during the, um, while we were doing COVID vaccinations, there were people who were um, 
there was, there was this couple that just gave me this check yesterday in this envelope. And they say, hey, Pastor, we just appreciate it. And then people were, people were during the day, they were like, okay, like a couple of dollars here, a couple of dollars here. They were just like appreciate. One of the workers said, hey, Pastor, you should put a basket out. You should put a basket out. I was like, no, we don't really roll like that. I'm roll like that. I know some of y'all would say, Pastor, you should put a basket out. <laughs> but, but God is that. So, and so I am grateful. So one of the things I'll put in the, in the basket today is there were some who, who came and they're just like, they were just praising God that they were able to get the vaccine. And so we praise God. We're going to ask Deacon Winston if he would bless the offering in advance. You can give as you leave at the entrances. And if you're online, you can give on easy time uh, as the Lord has blessed you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we, we thank you for another opportunity for waking us this morning in our right minds, the operation of our limbs. We're not in perfect health, but we thank you for what we have. We pray, Lord, that you will open up our hearts and our minds to give, just not pay you. Thank you for what you've given to us. We pray, Lord, that you will stop by each and every soul here today and just let them know what they have to be thankful for. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to smile on each and every one here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I pray that, that you, as you leave today, know that you are a winner. And it's not a choice between winning or losing. Know that you are a winner. And, and, and that, that Paul has laid it out. Paul has laid it out that, that we are winners and that we were born to win. Let's pray. Eternal and all-wise God, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you for allowing us to come into the house. Thank you for the beauty of this day. And Lord, thank you for still performing miracles. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation and the gift of unity and us coming together. And Lord, we pray that as we leave this place, that we will engage in ministry and be winners and that others will be so encouraged that they will see Christ in us, that when they look at us, they won't see us individually, but they'll see Christ and the one who raised us. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of grace. To the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And all God's people said, amen.